the criticism I have now, not not just about the, the how to referee the games, it's the way they, the referee the games as well, yeah. in the sense that the relationship is so broken. It's so broken now. I'm at matches every week. I see it. There is no relationship. You are listening to House of Football, brought to you by Sports Joe and William Hill. Welcome to episode 10 of House of Football with Sports Show and William Hill. I am Eric Lawler and I am delighted to say joined today by long-standing friend of the show, Mr. Alan Cawley. Al, how are you? I'm good, Eric, yeah. Good how could you not be good? And the in sun's splitting the rocks, absolutely fantastic. No better country in the world, Al. Yeah, that... I just said that to you on the way in, Eric. It's some place when the sun shines. Oh, stop. And, and also joined by uh, Sports Show stalwart. Robbie Redmond, Robbie, you're very welcome to the show. Thanks for having me back. Eric. Thanks. For ha- we had no choice. You said you That's were on it. That's true. A- <laughs> 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 I do produce to say. <laughs> Robbie's a producer. He says who goes on. I'm lucky to be in a job. To be honest, with you. I should be saying nice things to him. It's all down to Robbie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My yeah. Rob. <laughs> Well, I suppose, Robbie, we're going to go turn to you. Uh, the, the Premier League came to the end uh, the weekend. Give us a little summary of what happened. Well, finally, 10 months after it started, came to an end. So, a bit of relief for someone who works most weekends around it. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, relief for you or relief for your other half? For her, particularly. <laughs> for, yeah, long suffering. Um, so, yeah, it was everything stayed up. But it's skin that heat. To go down probably next season. <laughs> oh, <laughs> probably. Contra, fair chill. <laughs> um, yeah, and Leicester, which is kind of sad, like, but because they were so good, win the Premier League, then they fell off a bit, then they came back, and he had a great team under Rodgers and just collapsed the last while. So, yeah, interesting. But I think um, long term, I think you'll see maybe Everton might be in trouble this time next year because even the fans are celebrating, there were like, probably a sense of, oh, actually, we're still in trouble here. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I think it was, it was a character said, don't celebrate the moment. Mm. Give out to your board. Yeah. Get rid of that board or yeah. something like that. Um, and of course, your former club. Mm, gone. Al, gone. Gone, Eric. Like, what, what do and you feel about that? I'm not surprised. I was sad, but not surprised, to be honest with you. Whatever about Sam Allardyce coming in with three games to go or four games to go, like asking him to produce a miracle, I think was kind of uh, a bit far-fetched. Had he come in probably when Grazzi was appointed, I'd say it would have given him a better chance and given them a better chance, just like we saw with Sean Dyche. I always felt Everton would get out of it purely because of him and his experience. Now, he obviously left it very late, <laughs> but he still managed to keep them up and I felt it would have been similar had Allardyce more time. But the fact that he came in four games to go or whatever and a bit of a hoo-ha around him, I still thought it was a bit far-fetched thinking he was going to produce that miracle. And they've just conceded too many goals yeah. across the whole season, Eric. And you look at the defending on Sunday, you go back to the game, even West Ham last week the second half how bad it was and you think you're fighting for your life to stay in the Premier League but ultimately you look at that group of players and I've looked at it all season they're championship players at best right. I think the only one who would probably he probably move now whether he stays or not he, but anyone who might be chasing him or after him and he missed a large chunk particularly in the second half of the season is Tyler Adams I think is a very good player yeah. and he was a big miss for them obviously when he wasn't there uh, I know his mate McKenney came in but he didn't really have the no. impact and overall when you look at the players that they have like they're a championship play- yeah. team at best like. So yeah. Bielsa like Bielsa had them playing at a level that Probably the players themselves didn't think they were even massively capable. overachieving. Yeah, probably. yeah, and it's almost like as a Man United fan, I'm not too sad to see them get relegated. But it was some story to watch them under Bielsa to oh. bring them up to that level and mm. have them outperform. And they're great to watch. They must be like, how do we go from Bielsa being relegated with Big Sam and? With Jesse Marsh and even that the appointment yeah. to him, I was never com- no. convinced with him either. Yeah. I always felt like. He, well, was, he came from Red Bull or something, was it? Yeah, so he had a, a, yeah. yeah. And even like the interviews, different things, he just never convinced me, you know. <laughs> no. um, so I always, I thought that was a strange appointment as well. Then obviously he left. Um, was a Grazzi come in after him yeah. as well and all, a strange appointment. And it was obviously, whatever about going on on the pitch, there's a lot of stuff off the pitch, a bit of mismanagement yeah. as well. Something similar with Everton, the trouble yeah. off the pitch. It, it's not always just what's going on on the pitch either. Mm-hmm. You look at the clubs who were in those kind of positions and you think there's obviously trouble going on behind the scenes that we may not see as yeah. well. That always kind of is a factor, I find. But overall, Leeds are, are completely, like you could have no complaints, deserve to go down. Yeah, I think yeah. you can see that the most goals in a, in a month... The Premier League for Premier League games, yeah. like twenty three goals in a month, he conceded, which is like in this in this the month season. where they needed to be as yeah. tight yeah, as possible. Five, is it, fives and sixes yeah. there <laughs> and stuff like you were there, Alan. Like what would what would it be like for well, the fans? Like because it means more to them than 
A hundred percent, Rob. Yeah. Like, and that's the thing. That's why I suppose, from my point of view, I have no sympathy towards the players or the managers that were there. It's the fans, yeah. and, and they're the ones who will always be there. You know, the players will come and go, managers come and go, but the fans are always the ones that are paying out their hard-earned cash every week to go. They're still getting twenty thousand points in League One. And Eric, like, it's yeah. a phenomenal yeah. club in that regard. Like, and that's the sad thing because it's a Premier League club in mm-hmm. terms of the infrastructure and the support base, um, and that is the sad thing that obviously there, there's a bit of yo-yoing going on now where they've obviously come up and gone back down and whatever um, so that is the sad thing because the fans are unbelievable like they really they deserve are. better yeah and, and they, they do deserve better mm-hmm. yeah they're, they're absolutely like even you look at the likes of a Bournemouth or when Norwich were in the like I don't really associate those type of clubs as being Premier League yeah. whereas I look at Leeds Nottingham Forest even Sheffield Wednesday yeah. Yeah. like look at the stadium they have and the crowd and not just because I was there but it, I, you look at that club it's made for Premier League mm-hmm. it's always been in the big league when we were growing up as kids and yeah. all through the years watching it you'd have Sheffield Wednesday as one of the clubs in the, in the big time yeah, I also remember David Hurst because yeah. Man United were linked brilliant for player Hurst yeah, yeah, yeah. Waddle I played against Waddle one day Eric, and oh, really? yeah. oh, life, God. and he was about 40 at, at, <laughs> and he, he was still doing the little shimmy and you knew what was coming the left shimmy and you still couldn't stop it what a player Waddle oh, but um, yes. the likes of that stuff you know so I was delighted to see them go up yesterday obviously yeah. as well yeah. uh, but just in terms of the Leeds thing it is the fans you're right Rob that, yeah. that suffer and in Leicester, I suppose, you know, like as, as Rob alluded to there, they won the league not so long ago, won the FA Cup not so long ago. Seemed like a still very well-run club. I know there was issues with investment there recently to the start of this season. Rogers felt you kind know, of... I just called them out last year. They yeah. lost the Forest in the FA Cup and he said, like, he, was, he, he went like full Roy Keane on them. It's like there's some characters in there who aren't up to it. That was like a message to the board to go clear these, some of these guys out. Roy he didn't clear them out. The only one that really left was like Schmeichel. He mm. didn't replace him. Yeah, big loss. Yeah, huge loss. Big character. And Schmeichel. there's going to be a fire sale there now with the likes of Madison and Harvey Barnes. And I think Madison. You know my feelings on yeah. Madison. I love him. I really do. Yeah. Like it'll be interesting to see where he goes because I do think he's capable of playing with one of the top six clubs. Yeah, um, but yeah, you look at the Leicester situation as well, and it's here's one for you, Eric. A comment that was made because <laughs> I I have you in the whole Gary Lineker esque category. <laughs> oh wow, right? thank you. Right as the whole sports presenter, <laughs> all around all around good. <laughs> Does if Bowes win the league I'll does do his different podcast charity yeah. supports Bowes that's his team makes no bones about it but on Sunday night he made a, a really interesting comment just purely as a fan nothing to do with being the, the match of the day presenter he basically said if someone had to say to me 10 years ago that we would have won the league would have won the cup and then got relegated 4 or 5 years ago he says I would have snapped their hands off so if Bowes were to win the league this year <laughs> win the cup next year and be in division 1 in 2028 <laughs> would you take it or but if it they were only down for one season, yeah, would you? Would you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, would yeah, you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I think Leicester are going to come straight back up. I really do. Because well, with the fire sale, it's, it's not as easy as people think either. No, you know? no. But they're, they're just a very well-run club. They still have the resources well, there. They'd say they're not that well-run because well, they're not relegated. Yeah, 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 true, true. Okay, yeah, we just criticised the way they were run. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, they have the talent there. Yeah. The talent base to come back up. And the fan base, the structure. Maybe, yeah. even seven or eight of them. But it is so. It is the end of the season. So we're gonna we have a little section now called end of season awards. Al, so and, and, sorry, answer yeah. me. You would take that. Bowes winning the league, the cup next year, and relegate it in five years. Oh God, that has really put me on the spot. Now I know there'll be a few Bowes fans listening to this going. And when I get down to Daily Mail next, going, oh, I believe you want us relegated now, is it? Is it? <laughs> I'm not talking about the, the fact that we won the cup in the league around. Oh yeah, the relegation is it? Eric? Can we get relegated? Blame on you. So um, I don't know. It's an interesting. <laughs> it's one, a really it? tough one. That yeah, I could see where Lineker's coming from. He was from. adamant. Yeah, but he got heavily criticised by lesser fans for saying that. I think Did it was he? the timing. Yeah, yeah. I think it was the timing. They yeah, were very angry. There was, it was too sore, too like, soon. Oh, so soon yeah, after the like, day they got relegated. Yeah, yeah okay. I think that's what he was. He was just trying to be philosophical, I suppose, Listen, wasn't he? This time next year, when they get promoted again, if they are. Football moves I quick, think as, you as know. well, with Rob, I think with the Le- Leicester one, it's probably not the fairest comparison in the sense that Bowes are capable of winning the league. It wouldn't be far-fetched. Mm. It was an absolute, oh, yeah. like the greatest sporting achievement, I think, ever oh for Leicester God. to win a Premier League. Phenomenal. You know, Phenomenal. Whereas Bowes could win it this year, they could win it next year, they could win it in four years. Like it's a realistic yeah. thing that could happen. Whereas Leicester winning the Premier League, if they were in it for another hundred years, they'll never <laughs> win never it ever again. again. I suppose to, to 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 equate that to a League of Ireland team, be like say Bray Wanderers or something, something like that. Wouldn't it? up and win yeah. the league, kind it of would thing. Be. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, we have our end of season awards. Uh, at Rob, you like they're not just your regular end of season awards. There's some quirky little ones there. Some alternative. I kick one there. off there. Kick one off, let me see. Overrated, that's the one. Overrated. So, Overrated. So yeah. who's player, a player or a manager? Or a, or a, manager. Or a theory or anything. I'll give you anything. one, get the ball rolling. Go on. It's Eddie Howe. 
Eddie oh, Hearn. Oh, controversial. Eddie, I'm going to fight you over this oh, one. There we go. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> Robbie, go on. I, I want to fight wanna over this one. I want to hear your reason before, behind saying Eddie Howe is overrated. Well, this was sparked by Alan Shearer's article last week in The Athletic where he's like, thank you, Eddie Howe. And I'm like, thank you, Eddie Howe. Like, Eddie Howe isn't the guy who invested 300 million in new <laughs> players. Like, Eddie Howe is a good coach, but he can be good and overrated. Okay. So, fair they, point. To make my point, I was like, I had this point. I was like, then I have to get evidence to back it up then. So I was digging through and I was like, when he took over, they won one out of ten matches. Now you could say that's a coach bedding in. Then all the money comes in, and then, which is nearly three hundred million euro, they sign like Bruno Gomes, like Champions League level player, Isak, Champions League level player, like Kieran Trippier, Champions League level player. So like he deserves credit, yeah. but also Liverpool have been under par. Tottenham collapsed. Like it's not that fourth place was there for someone. And it just happened to so be the team that invested three hundred million in players. So yeah, he's done a good job. Yeah, but I don't think he is. He's not. He wouldn't be one of your contenders for manager of the year or anything like that. Maybe because he's one of the only few that stayed around. You'd have to have him in consideration. <laughs> the only, he's done a good job. The only manager that survived this year. Yeah, yeah. Listen, yeah. I think think it's over. I don't think he's overrated. I actually don't think he's the answer for them long term. They need to evolve their style because yeah. they spent most of the season wasting time as well. So. Eddie Howe, that's my first one. It's wow. rare that we disagree, Rob, but yeah. I would disagree massively on that. <laughs> okay, I would, yeah. What's your well, I, he's done a phenomenal job, money or not. Money doesn't mean that obviously everything's going to be rosy in the garden when you even look at the likes of United or Chelsea. Uh, in terms of the waste. Chelsea yeah. is another example of massive waste. So I think the money being available is a help, but I still think you need to spend it wisely. But once you have the players in the building, I think it's about coaching them into obviously, and to be fair, I would look at Newcastle and regardless of individuals like Bruno Gomeres, Trippier, who's a rifle, ten a penny rifles are, but they're obviously very good. But I think he's a brilliant one. Um, and Ishak are the three that you mentioned is the key ones. I think you look at the team and how they're coached and it's not just down to Gomeres being a good player. You look at the likes of Willock, who anyone could sign. Mm. Bray Wanderers could have signed Willock. <laughs> Dan Byrne, Sean yeah. Longstaff, Jacob Murphy, these were these were players who you could argue were more but more kind of uh, important than some of the lads they brought in who had massive seasons for Newcastle, unbelievable. And Callum a, Wilson, a up classic front. case as well, the the rebirth of Almiron. Yeah, Almiron, unbelievable. Yeah, <laughs> he was absolutely brilliant the early yeah. part of the season. So I just think it's not all about money, which is why. And I think they've kind of they've they've made that point. I know there's obviously huge kind of uh, debate and discussion around the ownership of the clubs nowadays, and rightly so. And here's another one now: yeah. a Saudi state, whatever. And we're thinking, where's football going with this? I think they actually could end up doubling the spending now. Is the worry yeah. I'd have with now that they've done so well? But I think on Eddie's how watch on Eddie Howe's watch. I don't think it's all been about just the money that they've gone out and wasted five and six hundred million and all of a sudden become good. I think when you look at the likes of those players who've outperformed Willock being brilliant, Dan Byrne, the likes of those fellas who were standard Premier League players, yeah. you wouldn't have them down as outstanding players. I think, I, I think that's the main reason. It's a good counter argument. It's a very good counter argument. Yeah, it's a good counter argument. One that come, for me last week I was watching Leicester and I was like, if you put Newcastle signings in Leicester's team, would it have been Leicester up there? Yeah. So like I, I feel like that He's a good coach. He's done very well, but I just think the money and the quality of player that's come in has has been a massive help. I yeah. think he's done well, Rob. To be okay, fair. he's done well. Yeah. I think he can do well and be overrated. We'll have to agree to disagree. <laughs> but okay, yeah. I think where 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 I with Al is that he's made perceivably average players look a lot better. So the sum of the parts is greater than the whole, if you know what I mean. Absolutely. Yeah. And they like so. Camara has helped massively a world class, class. Of course, they're going to make a huge yeah. difference, someone like that. But I just think, as you said, Eric, it's the, it's the collective rather than the individual, mm -hmm. and that's down to the coach. Um, one of, one of the suggestions for overrated came, and it might have been something we touched on in the previous podcast. Uh, somebody said Ten Hag has I'm, been overrated, and that you know he's gone to Manchester United, uh, a behemoth of the world game. And uh, he was criticised in some quarters, Robbie, wasn't he? Because he did a speech on the pitch at the end of the match. Oh, look how far, far United have fallen. Third place in the league. And he's addressing the supporters like they've won the Champions League. <laughs> I think that's tradi tradition at United, though. Uh, yeah, it is. I mean, I, I, Poor I, Moyes well, never got the chance, though. I think Louis van Gaal did. I think he did. Yeah, you're right. he finished fifth. Yeah. Like that's more yeah. famously though, isn't the one with Ferguson's last game? Yeah, yeah well look at that. You, you stand by your, <laughs> yeah. you stand by Aaron. You've a job to do now. for at least seven <laughs> months anyway. <laughs> yeah. So um, I would argue Ten Hag has been a, a, a huge success, and I, I speak as from a Man United fan's point of view. In that last season, finished so depressingly bad. The the whole Rannick fiasco. 
um, and how poor we were. Ronaldo was in the club. It was like a little bit of it. Like, come here, I've been. I, I adore Ronaldo from his previous life at Man United, and you know he's a legend and always will be. But I think this, the minute he came back to the club, um, things went downhill, and, uh, and 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 it was his ego and all that kind of stuff. Ten Hag came into a difficult situation. I loved when I think back to last season. Like, the, there's talk. This sorry, uh, I'm going going to write here, but Chelsea have just announced Pochettino as the manager. They're saying he won't start till the first of July, right? And I was looking at Chelsea fans on Sky Sports News yesterday. Going, he needs to start now. <laughs> he needs to start now. We need, look, we've got 14 players to get rid of and and all that kind of stuff. I remember last season, Ten Hag uh, finished up early with Ajax. I think yeah, it was. You're right. And came and he was seen at Selhurst Park sitting Straight in the in work. the stand in watching the suit. Yeah, he remember watching Rannick yeah. and uh, and that United team. And he, he must have been gone, what have I taken on here? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? But he went away, did his homework, made some signings, which everyone didn't agree with. And when you look, like, if somebody said to me at the start of the season, Man United would get top four, they'd win a trophy and be in the running for the second trophy at the end of the season. Oh my God, the proverbial bite your hand off. I'd be all over it. So I think that's not fair on Ten Hag. I don't think he's been overrated. I think he's, uh, I think he's a great manager. And as I said in the previous podcast, and I stand by it, he will be the next Manchester United manager to win a Premier League. Okay. It's a big statement, <laughs> but, I, big statement. but I, I don't think it's far-fetched. Yeah. I think there's some truth in that. Everything that you've said there, I would agree with as well. If someone had to say to you at the start of the year, considering what he was inheriting, and I agree with you as well, that was a massive um, play by him in the sense that coming in in pre-season, because you're right, the Chelsea fans are 100% correct. Pochettino needed to start yesterday, <laughs> yeah. not in the 1st of July. So Ten Hag was proactive there in getting his hands dirty, rolling up the sleeves and knowing... I need to give myself a bit of a head start here. I think the proof was in the pudding with the if if I'm not mistaken, Man United had an unbelievable preseason last year yeah. where they were beating all before them and yeah. people thinking what's going on here, you know. Um so I definitely think that helps. Then the whole Ronaldo thing, I think how we dealt with that, he came out of that looking like the main man as the yeah. boss not being undermined, which was hugely mm-hmm. important, especially nowadays as a manager, like it's important that you're seen as the main man, um, especially with the power the players have. And I think, as you said, Eric, the finished third to win the League Cup and now to be obviously facing off against Man City with another opportunity to win a cup. Every Man United fan, and I don't care what anyone says, would have snapped their hand yeah. off for that at the start yeah. of the season. It does Ask show again. falling in standards. Ask me again next week if they stop Man City. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. one per- person I, will. I would throw into that who I think is my overrated, Yes, it's actually an individual with Man United oh. and I think he needs to... I know who you're going to say. I will defend him. Sancho. Oh, Sancho. All right, yeah. Okay, yeah right. The money yeah. that was paid for him, we're on about money for players. He needs to do a whole lot more. Mm-hmm. Like, he really does. Like, he's one that you could pick out and say, like, come on. And yeah. I think he's under pressure in terms of Ten Hag is obviously coming off the back of a good season, but still knows there's massive work to be done. I think he'd be the one when, you know, when you go into the manager's offices and you see the whiteboard <laughs> on the back when, you, when you're watching documentaries and you have the names down yeah. the left there of the fellas, the outcasts, <laughs> and over here, the ones I like, he's very much a this category yeah, at the moment, yeah. Sancho. Definitely. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick off the next category, which is you know the the, the nice feel good stories of the year. All right, and I'm just gonna opt for because I did see some of the options, and I tried to think of my own, but one of the options that was suggested is something that I really, really enjoyed, and it was the whole Brighton this season in the Premier League. I just think um, they went through a tough time. As when, your like favorite a, story. His favorite story, yeah, genuinely, because um, like they went through a little bit of a tumultuous time when Potter went to, to to Chelsea, and they all thought, "Oh my God, that's you know that's Brighton's little bubble burst." The Zerbi came in. Not much was known about him, I suppose, in in English circles. Although he had a good track record in Italy with Sassuolo, and he played brilliant attacking football. Went to Shakhtar Donetsk, brilliant football again, and then COVID happened, and so he was available. And it just shows you how how astutely that club is run with the players that they bring in from. Paraguay, Ecuador, Argentina, these unknown teenagers who look like superstars already, like under the Zerbi stewardship. We have our own superstar, young superstar playing for, we, we don't need to name, everyone knows them. Um, the way they play, and I'm so thrilled that there's a good news story in football in that a club that's well run, invested in its youth, invested in its infrastructure, has a great scouting system, and the proof is in the pudding that they got European football for the first time in their history. And I take my hat off to Brighton this season. I would agree every word of that as well, <coughs> Rob. And another thing to go back to the Newcastle thing, the reason why I think it won't be all about money and who's played a huge part in the Brighton story is Dan Ashworth, yeah, who's gone in with Newcastle either. now as the chief operating officer or whatever title to have. Uh, but the, basically the man upstairs and he overseeing so much at Brighton. One of the best interviews I ever heard, actually. You know when Jay Humphreys 
on the Saturday morning and they used to bring down the player from involved yeah. at the club, whoever they were covering that day. But Dan Ashworth came down, check it out, people. Dan Ashworth came down one day, did about eight and a half minutes of an overview, basically, of what's happening at Brighton. It was about three years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Unbelievable. And he's a huge cog in that. And he's obviously moved on now, but he started the ball rolling there. And I would agree with everything about Brighton. Fantastic club. Just a joy to watch. A joy to watch. And those young players, that in CISO and ah, Bonanate and yeah. all these. And other names I can't pronounce. Class. <laughs> just class. But they will whatever, become household names and be loved. I remember, who was it? There was somebody who signed. Oh, yeah. Remember when Gundawan signed for City? From, even when he was a superstar at Dortmund. I was looking at his name and going, Gundogan, 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 Yeah, man, off Dortmund, I saw him for City. That's how I used to call him for about a year. And then, and now it's become natural Gundogan. Yeah, Gundogan. for me, the <laughs> best story, though, even though it's Messi winning the World Cup. Like, ah, yes. Yeah. Like, even though that feels like a long, long time ago. It's, it's, it's the cycle I can't season, believe. It's unbelievable. The, the cycle I moved on so quick. Like, so they won the World Cup on the Sunday. And yeah. Man United played then, like, the Wednesday after in the Carling wow. Cup. That's right, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Too much, like, there's too much football. And what a match as well. It was amazing. Well, it was amazing. Like, even the one before that in the quarterfinals against um, Netherlands, yeah. when you're 2-0 up. Yeah, incredible. And then Netherlands come back and it was 2-all. And at one point, the Argentine, Big the Argentinian <laughs> player booted the ball into the, at the Dutch defence. Oh, on, yeah. on the bench, that was yeah. me. That's from my favourite moment. And was was the there was really are, you linking your, are you linking the... Favourite story and then your favourite moment. Oh my God, I was thought, I was like, this match can't get any better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then Messi wins it, of course. But then, yeah, fine. And what was great about that is just settled the most boring debate ever, which is Messi v Ronaldo. Like, I'm a United fan, but it was never a debate. Yeah. But now, like, it's like, well, we can't debate this point anymore. Yeah. Messi's just the undisputed best I've, ever. And I've, I, I agree to you, Robbie. I've always been, because of my United bias, I was always, no, Ronaldo's the best. I mean, Ronaldo's the best. He's the best to go. Um, but I just think his. His latest uh, appearance in a Manchester, his latest tenure at United, soured his legacy to an extent. Well, that's and, in our uh, letdown category if we have one. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, I'm in, I'm I'm a United fan who'd always loved Messi. Yeah, yeah me always. Too. And that was the crowning moment, obviously, the World Cup because it was the only stick people had to beat him with. Yeah. Yet I and I'd be arguing black and blue with fellas over it, and I was always Messi, Messi, Messi. Yeah. And it almost felt like that. I was nearly emotional, like what when he won it. It was just incredible. And my, imagine the pressure he felt. Like, or, like this the, is the, the thing. Hopes of like, a nation. There you go. Like that's <laughs> like well, regardless of the football side of it, just the fact that he had to lie in his bed at night thinking, "It's <laughs> <laughs> all down to me." <laughs> you know, like what's going through his head? Yeah. What does he chat to the missus about at the dinners? <laughs> I can't believe this. This is all on me. What am I going to do here? Like I'm thinking to get the hall painted. Yeah. What about inverted fullbacks? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so and I'm linking the Brighton and the Argentina thing uh, into my yeah. like story so Alexis McAllister oh, who was a bit yeah. of an unsung hero I don't think he started the first couple of games yeah. came into the team and I just think he's been a revelation not only in the World Cup with Brighton but that moment when he came back to Brighton and then going back oh, to what you were saying about the club and the whole of the staff was waiting on him oh, and they were in the corridor brilliant. and it was just Unbelievable. Yeah. And I heard him in an interview last week after the beat United. Yeah. And he just spoke about, and it's something I love about all those kind of superstar players at times, especially South Americans, the humility he showed. He spoke after the match about getting man of the match and they were all kind of all over him, lapping him up. And he just, all he wanted to talk about was how thankful and grateful he was to Brighton for giving yeah. him a chance. He looked emotional the other day. Like, and this is the like, fellow who's here after winning the World Cup. You think he's coming back thinking, I'm yeah, Billy I'm, Big Balls. Yeah, yeah. He's, he was straight back to yeah. training just mucking in with them all and yeah. I just thought fantastic absolutely brilliant brilliant yeah, so, but speaking um, of letdowns can't mention Messi and Ronaldo was such a letdown because I was watching if we have our biggest letdown award this season it would be him because I was watching the match against Fulham and you're thinking this should be his send off like mm. he should have just oh you mean yeah, yeah. if he stuck out the rest for of the season you know months, like just yeah. put, put his ego aside come on for 10 minutes score the odd goal or still be the hero still be the hero get a send off and then go off and play in Saudi Arabia that would have been perfect yeah. end to it all instead I'm not saying it's Ronaldo's he, fault now but he's gone to Al Nasser and they were what 8 <laughs> points clear in the Saudi force division and they it's Piers Morgan's <laughs> fault I yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is they finished second with a game to spare there was something though vulnerable about him I know he's been around a long time but it's almost sad to see him kind of like thinking this, this guy Piers Morgan he can trust him yeah the road he went down as yeah, well. Like, go down that road with him and tweeting about it every 24 minutes. And, <laughs> like, honestly. like Criticising your players and your, just, your just colleagues. Go and, to a sports journalist and say, yeah. look, you know, and, and have a chat with him. But to go out the whole... Yeah, to Mr. Sensational. Of, like, yeah. it was just uh, the <laughs> road he went down. He tarnished everything that was good about him. He yeah. tarnished. And he could have had such a send-off. So we have to give him the biggest letdown. Yeah. Definitely. Um, some people would argue, Robbie, I'll throw it out to both of you there now. 
Some people would say the biggest letdown this season was Arsenal. Comment. Um, <laughs> no, you couldn't. Ultimately, you couldn't because they were never expected to be pushing Man City that close. But back in January, February, people were saying, I was going back checking it, like everyone was saying, they're going to win it. I was checking mid-season predictions from some publications in the UK and all the <coughs> journalists like Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal. But I think a lot of people forgot that the month was nearly, the season was nearly a month behind mm -hmm. because of the World Cup. Of course. And like, yeah, I wouldn't say you're a letdown, but you would have liked to see them push Man City a bit further. But I think they did as much as they, as much as they probably could. And ultimately, it was a great season, really. Yeah. When you step back. I mean, there, I, I got to a point where I thought, yeah, do you know what? This is one of them seasons. Arsenal don't look like relenting. They're going to mm. win this. But I was saying Arsenal all along. Yeah. Right up until the last couple, the, the couple of weeks where they, lost, they drew with Liverpool, was it? And then them couple of defeats yeah. after. And that was the turning point. Um, but I could, I, w I definitely couldn't accuse them of being a letdown over the course of the season. I thought they let themselves down in those couple of games yeah, that they yeah. should have won, especially the West West Ham one as well. There were two up that mm -hmm. day. And then to be two down, was it against Southampton so yeah. early in the game? That was the two weeks that killed it for them. But over the course of the season and some of the football they played, um, I think they've been absolutely brilliant. And when you throw in... Man, Man City and how good they are yeah. and money if you want to talk money if they spent a billion yeah, or whatever they spent <laughs> but they still have Guardiola um, and the football they play and the points tally like Arsenal would have won the league over and over oh, yeah. many years ago with the points tally they've accumulated and it was, it was Gary Neville who was, who was lambasted and lampooned who went on record saying that you know he, he felt that City would win the league at a canter and that Arsenal would collapse and everyone jumped on him going ah mm. oh, you don't know what you're talking about and now he's been proven right so, it brings me nicely onto my next category. Can I and just throw in I, my letdown? Yes. Sorry, Eric, to cut across you. But it's important I say this. Spurs have been my letdown. Ah, yeah. yes. And, and the reason being, my little lad loves Spurs. And we've been over little a few Hardy. times. And the night we were in the San Siro, and obviously AC Milan went on, and we know they got well beaten in the semi-final. But Spurs had such a road that they could have been in that semi-final. No problem. Because yeah. AC Milan were so average. And we were there that night. And talk about going out on a whimper. I don't understand this. Like, mm -hmm. when you have so much at stake and to play in the manner of you're just kind of going through Submissive. the most... I just yeah. don't get it, like, no, with, yeah. with a lot of footballers. And they're my major letdown. But on top of that, I think Harry Kane's been absolutely incredible. Oh, amazing. And to score 30 league goals in a team that's been up and down and not even a word about it because Haaland is a monster. Yeah. I think Harry Kane is phenomenal. Yeah. Oh, he's, and, you know, if if, uh, if I was a, a, a Qatari businessman buying Manchester United, he'd be my first, <laughs> first one. First one. First yeah, yeah. one. Yeah. Because <laughs> were going to be what Arsenal were, which was pushing Man City. A hundred percent. I think they were meant to be. They should have been. Yeah. Were maybe a few shining, signing short or something wasn't Well, they got off to the such a great start. Yeah. And then the Conte thing. That's, uh, have we a moment of the season? Oh the yeah, 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 yeah! Go for it. That's that, my that's that my great. moment. <laughs> yeah, because I because as I said, I've kind of grown a soft spot for Spurs more so for the little lads. So I've watched a lot what's going on, and we've been over. And we were there the day Kane broke the record oh. against Man City, and they were phenomenal, unbelievable. I'm thinking this this is a great team, and Conte and them all. Next thing you're watching them then over the next few weeks and kind of throw away leads and defending like they don't give a shit, mm -hmm. and then Conte goes on his rant, oh, and man. I love Conte, yeah, and talking about passion and and fire in the belly and all, and he's going into that press conference and tore lumps out of him, yeah. and I thought I knew there was no way back, but I absolutely loved every <laughs> yeah, second of it. Brilliant! It was probably the first time trying to hear like the manager <coughs> loses the dressing room. Like the club had lost the manager. He's just like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, the dressing room lost yeah. the manager. Yeah, he had that much to stay in that he was like, oh, I am not. I'm flying back for the international break. I'm not coming back here. Yeah. What can I do to get out of this situation? Oh yeah, and I remember <laughs> yeah. the game was Southampton. Yeah. They were yeah. three one up and they conceded two minutes yeah. to go. Yeah. Again, throwing away a lead, the shock and defending, looking like they don't care. And he went to town on them. And I love that because that's near almost missing now. It needs to be said, doesn't it? 100%. Yeah. Come out yeah. and say it. And Conte, yeah. you know, in fairness to him, up to that point had gone through some difficult circumstances. Mm. His best friend uh, had died. Um, he had bladder issues. Oh, yeah. I know all about them, let me tell you. But anyway, he had bladder issues. And uh, so, you know, I'd say that contributed to his angst and his. And he just said, ah, here, fuck yeah. this. Someone's getting it. <laughs> because it, because is, I, is it Levy's fault? Is, is, is that where the blame is? Is that where the book stops? Yeah, you'd have to, like, you know, in terms of, um, like, you, you look at Conte and the career that he, he has had and the CV. And what I thought was brilliant about that, and it wasn't a case of him throwing players under the bus and, and kind of disassociating himself or absolving himself of the blame. I felt it was, here I am, a top manager that I've proved it over and over. And a, a team normally reflects a manager. And here you have these fellas who, who wouldn't walk through the, the door for you, where Conte <laughs> wants to run through walls yeah. and he wants players to run through the walls with him. Mm -hmm. 
So he was basically saying, the, I'm not linked to these fellas. There's no way these are, are a reflection of me. Yeah. So he was basically coming out and saying that, and I thought it was brilliant. brilliant. He, yeah, he, I mean, I got, before, before you really interrupt me there, because I had a beautifully seamless segue into the next category, Al, I'm going to stop stop you there and start the next category, if that's okay, right? <laughs> because you're a pundit, right? We're calling this next award the inaugural Alan Cawley Pundit of the Year Award. I like it. Yes. I like so, it, Eric. So, so, Al, in your opinion... And Robbie, of course, it's to you as well. Who's been the best pundit out there on any channel? Who has been the most enjoyable, worth the money for their book and all that kind of stuff? Who, who would you? I'll start the ball rolling. And I think he, um, I think he's been unfairly criticised. He finished up at Sky this year, but I always enjoyed watching him. It was Sunus. Yeah, I enjoyed watching Sunus. Yeah, um, you disagree with Sunus most of the time. I yeah, find. like that's a good thing with pundits because I always find you want someone to have a counterpoint to you, like. I remember when I was a United fan back when Moyes was the manager and the pundits be always praising Moyes and I'm like, he's terrible and it get you like kind of kick your own thoughts into action. So as soon as I said something, I used to disagree with I kinda I like having someone there like that. So you will miss him on So the you screen. think the cat deserved to kick off Zoom Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's because soon as what did he say? He famously said, to be fair. The cat's done nothing wrong there. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love that. That was like that was one of my moments of the season. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, Soonus is good. Yeah. yeah, I always liked and always respected Soonus. Yeah, um, and always had a strong opinion. My favorite is probably well, I have two. So I have a favorite who I enjoy watching the most, and then I have someone who I think is the best that I love listening to. Mm -hmm. And Keen is my favorite. Yeah, I love Keen. He's gold. He's box office. He's all the phrases you want. But he has, a, he has a good opinion as well, but in the sense that he's not overly analytical yeah, and doesn't is. go into too much detail, but he's, boom, straight to the point. Old school, which I like, because that's yeah. the way I was kind of growing up, and it's like, say it, and that's it. Like, you know, yeah. some of them now, the way they talk about football infuriates me about yeah. the phrases and the terminology oh. is mm -hmm. absolute nonsense, Eric, right? <laughs> it really is. And me as a pundit, I like, I like to get to the point and say it, yeah. you know, but with a bit of detail. And... The one who I think gives the detail and analyzes it the best, and he probably has the resources to do it, but I think Carragher is excellent in the Monday Night Football show. Yeah. And it's backed up with, obviously, as I said, the resources that he has. Mm -hmm. I always used to think him and Neville used to bounce off each other brilliantly. I've kind of gone off Neville a little bit because he's too involved. He has an opinion on everything now. Yeah. And you're like, all right, Gary, relax, will you? Is he like, ever at home? Like, he's got so much going on. You know, and, and, and as I say, when, I, when he does talk about football and he gets into it, I really enjoy listening to him. But he just, he has too much going on. Yeah, yeah he's overexposed. Yeah. I think, like, yeah. When he never came on the scene, it was revolutionary for pundits. Mm. Yeah. He didn't speak like that. It was always like, say what you type C say what you see on the pitch and never went into detail and Carragher's taking it on a level um, definitely but when you hear too much from the pun it's, it doesn't doesn't make as much of an impact that's what's brilliant about Roy because yeah. he's such a clear communicator Yeah, and you only and see him maybe when we, maybe if it's Sunday afternoon won't see him again until a big United match yeah but they boxes. use him really well yeah, yeah. so that he's not overexposed yeah. it's perfect yeah. and when he, he comes in he makes he an impact he doesn't get into the weeds but that's a, that is a good thing as Alan said like, and I, I like reading tactical stuff but I don't expect that from Roy Keane. Like People Neville, Neville comes off Sky cameras, yeah. and he's straight onto Twitter. <laughs> Have you not had enough time to give oh. your opinion in front of the camera? And then he's tweeting all about it again, and then he's onto the politics, and then he's back, and then he's onto the overlap, <laughs> and then he's and you're like, all right, guys, will you just go home and <laughs> yeah. have a nice bit of grub? Do you hate your wife? I walk down. Like, <laughs> never got home, give her a hug. But like less is more with them, and like hearing from Neville once a week, you be like, geez, this guy is brilliant. Mm -hmm. But when you hear him five, six times a week, like he could be on a podcast, he could be doing two or three different shows, commentary and in the studio, whereas the, the beauty of Keane is that it's just Sunday afternoon, the hour after the match. He does his commentary as well. Here's another one I, I've just thought of. <laughs> he does his commentary of Martin Tyler and then they do a podcast for half oh, an hour about yeah. what he's just spoke about for the match. <laughs> and I'm kind of like, or, like come It could on. be Sky, like the golden goose that the... But as you says, if you overexpose the golden goose, that's it. You know what I mean? You're left with a rotten egg. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and Keane, sorry, Keane, the good thing with Keane is that he's, he's really settled into it because he used to hate being a pundit. Yeah. He used to say, like, it was basically bullshit. Do you think, Robbie, that he has accepted his role yeah. as this, for want of a better expression, soundbite creator, if you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I this thought he was going to go back to Sunderland. I remember he was linked to them last year at the job and I was like, well, here's his chance. Like, yeah. someone's coming in for him. No one has come in for him in years. We turned it down. I don't know what it was, but he can make very good money, I'd imagine, just watching football and having an opinion on it. Yeah. And he speaks like the camera isn't there. Now, he's a bit more, I think, aware of the camera, like that baby line about Robertson. Yeah, they're right. Baby. He plays delivery, up to it a bit now. Yeah, his yeah, delivery is yeah. brilliant. But what, what I like about him is, is like I said, I love reading tactical stuff, but I just like that he just gets to the point and it's no... 
there's like you don't come to Keane for an analysis like yeah. like that's you don't go to McDonald's for a steak like yeah. you know what I mean like he, Keane's not going to give you what he can this is what he's good at he's yeah. straight he, to the point he talks about he doesn't go into as you say the the, the tactics the deep deep tactics he, he talks about Commitment, yeah, yeah. effort, but yeah. the stuff that makes him, stuff, the yeah. stuff that makes him, the un- fundamentals of the gamer, yeah. yeah, which are which sometimes you think are lost now yeah, because yeah. you have the fella talking about the low blocks and the sixes and the eights, <laughs> and you're kind of like, <laughs> right. inverted winger, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. And, and 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 even though there's a place for that at a certain time, yeah, I think you can mix it up a little bit, but he's just. Mm-hmm. They didn't work hard enough today. Yeah. Yeah. So the stuff is, oh, sorry, the stuff that makes him unsuited to be a manager at the moment, which is his directness, his bluntness. It's actually what makes him a brilliant pundit. Yes. Because he's up in the studio saying this stuff. If he went into the dressing room and said that, like, he'd wilt. The yeah, players wouldn't yeah. be able to hack it anymore. Well, the, that's the content yeah. point that we're making. They can't handle it. One of his pet peeves, which I always enjoy, I love when Roy Keane is on a match and I see players hugging each other in the tunnel. He's like, now he's going <laughs> to have a comment about out, that. He's giving out about the head that we get when he oh, misses. Oh, that was great. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> saying, Eric, like, he, what was brilliant about that, he was true in a line going, true, he was trying to go to Real Madrid a few years ago. Yeah. I was like, that was eight years ago. Yeah. Eight years ago. And he's he still remember- oh, yeah, yeah, unbelievable. Because to him, that's lack of character and yeah. Keen. this is the stuff that matters to him so yeah he's, he's great and it's great that they only use him once a week because when he's been on Monday Night Football and Carragher has the machine and he's going in depth and Roy's is like yeah like what you want me to say like, <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, a fraud yeah. he's a fraud like that's what he's good at Like <laughs> he, sa- he said about because he, he, obviously him and Richards have struck up a bit yeah. of a rapport as well and I wouldn't be his biggest fan but I think him and Keane obviously have yeah. something going on and he seems to like him as well um, but he mentioned Fafana, was it, at the weekend? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I missed this. Oh, Mike Rich says, I yeah. think Chelsea are going to be great next year. Pochettino, look at the players that are going to do it. And one who's going to be really pivotal is that Fafana, great player. He's been dreadful. <laughs> 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 Straight in, like, you know, nails him. Um, it in the, um, and did Mike just go off and start laughing? There was one where, like, <laughs> even the, f- the previous week, about Jordan Pickford. Yeah. And oh, Kane yeah. made no expression towards Michael Richards. He's sitting there like this. But it was a wide camera shot, so you could see Michael's reaction. And he's not even looking at him, and he's saying, Pickford, yeah, like, you, you look at him, and people say he's a top goalie. He's not a top goalie. Uh, Michael, no Rich- Michael Richards said he's a top goalie. He's not a top goalie. <laughs> and Michael Richards like, and here, <laughs> So that kind of stuff, you know, that's yeah, TV as well. You need a bit of entertainment. Per- he's perfect for it. Like. But, but he, he's, he's still making a strong point. Would we agree then that Roy Kane would be our pundit of the year? Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah, Roy would be. Roy, mine, yeah. if you're listening, next time you're in Dublin, drop into the offices. We have a little trophy for you. <laughs> what do you might think of us? <laughs> I'd love to sit in the studio with Roy. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I actually love to go for a walk with Roy. I'd love to sit in a studio with him. I'd yeah. love to go for a pint with him. I'd love to just go and watch a hurling match with him. Yeah, I mean he's, he goes down the cross. Goal, Roy. He's going turns cross. Yeah, yeah, yeah he loves the game. Goes yeah. to South. Just loves it. Like yeah. you know. Um, right, he so even went to the Crucible final. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw the picture with Ken. He's a man after my own heart. There's yeah, a lot of similarities there. A lot of similarities. Biggest gripe of the year, lads. So, so if I was if I was to kick that one off, I would say like the one thing that kind of annoyed me, and it's, it seems to be creeping into the game more and more. Now I know, I know players are always trying to steal that extra millimeter, that extra yard for the you know, and and games are, big games are often decided on fine details. But the biggest gripe I have, and it seems to be becoming endemic in the game now, is you know when there's a bleeding corner. Mm. And they put the ball in the quadrant. Mm. Does that annoy you? And, and they try and put it as far away. <laughs> they try and I'm not putting it in the quadrant. They're going to steal half a millimetre here. And the lines are in the ref always come over in a wasted minute. Going, yeah. you're going to have to move back back half a millimetre. <laughs> well, and yeah, have, other stoppages yeah. in the game are overlooked. Kind that's of thing. it. Like I haven't noticed that as much, but when you do notice the other stuff, that's let go. You're like, yeah. why are they caring about a millimetre like that? <laughs> like my biggest gripe would probably be time wasting. Like I was at a match a couple of weeks ago. I mean, United fan, but I was, in, I was actually at Anfield. Okay. Yeah, and I um, couldn't get any reception on my phone, and I was away from my mates. So I was standing on my own, most Liverpool fans. So all I had to really do was just watch the game completely. But every time the ball would go dead, I'd look up over the um, the clock. It was like a minute would go. Who then, who were they playing? Brentford. So okay. I'm, like I'd say, in total, the ball was in play for forty minutes. I'd say. Wow. And then I checked then stats on Opta, and like the average that the ball is in play in the Premier League this season is like fifty four minutes. In the World Cup, was fifty eight. And that yeah. was with all that mad injury time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like so, to me, it's like it's nearly it's become like it's become an issue. Like, and it, I don't think it even helps teams really. Why? When when you think about why it was introduced as the injury time in the World Cup, mm-hmm. but never brought back to any of the leagues, it seems strange because I actually think it added to it. Oh, it was brilliant! Brilliant! It was like having like a bonus episode or yeah. another bit, like 100% and punishing the fellas who thought you know. It. Yeah. And whereas you see, so you were at a match there, Robin, it was like. 
they oh. just they almost went and they used to be gas because did like, something progressive and then they never really implemented into any leagues. Like, it might start coming in. I think I was saying to Eric as well. If on top of that, if you could change one thing for me, it'd be like the ball has to be in play for sixty minutes. Mm. Like that's because on average in the World Cup it was fifty eight. So let's try and get that was with all the extended like, time. You're paying so much to go to these games to watch them on Sky. Like, Do you think that should be a rule brought in yeah. and and a responsibility put on the teams? Yeah, so, someone clock watching. That's it. There's a the referees watch, and then there's another person watching the referee going, "No, actually, it's only been in play for 55. Okay, we need to play like." We're all at the coming here to watch the game. You might as well do it right. Do you? You're a, you're a cricket fan, eh, Rob? No, it's no, cricket. sorry, it was, it was. I love a bit of cricket now, fair to sell. <laughs> no, <laughs> the reason I break because I'm nearly Ireland, sure there's a England Lords this weekend. We are. <laughs> no, I love the cricket, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I'm nearly sure even in the um, 2020 format, there's you have to. Um, what what is certain number of balls? I was going to say serve. Ball. You have to bowl. Ball, no. <laughs> if the, I was going to say serve. You have to bowl your overs in yeah. a certain number of minute, minutes yeah. like that. Yeah. So you see the fella running back. You know he might mm-hmm. be going slow. Yeah. His first two or three balls, and someone's in here. We're, we're under the clock here, and yeah. you see him. So That's something it. like that. There you might see, be a place for it. You see people going like, "Oh, it's the dark arts." Like, um, it's a good thing for fans or players to do this. But like, sometimes it goes against them. Mm. Like Arsenal were two 0 up at Anfield. After half an hour, start wasting time, mm. and that wound up Anfield. Royal Anfield, and up, it's like yeah. it works against them. And I just think you sit. There's not much you sit down to watch a game and a goal kick. I remember like Southampton playing Arsenal, and it was like a minute for every goal kick. And you're like, you just end up going on your phone, or you just feel like you're being cheated. So that would be my biggest gripe, definitely. So time, time wasting. wasting for you, Rob. Uh, the, the, the referee and I'll I'm just the re- about to say it, my biggest gripe. We haven't touched on the League of Ireland yet. But the standard of refereeing, and I know it's been well documented and well spoken about, and I've been one of them who've been critical of it, but I think it's gone to the point now, and I spoke to an assessor about this actually in Richmond Park recently, just to get their viewpoint on it. Because it's easy for the managers to come out and slate the referees after every match, with rightly so in, in mm-hmm. certain cases, or the likes of me in a studio. The example I used was the night we did the Shamrock Rovers Bohemians match. Yeah. And a penalty, the tackle on Jonathan Afalabi, stonewall penalty, I think everybody could see it. And that has such a huge influence on the season upcoming. We're speaking about Bowes potentially winning yeah. the league. Then they don't get the penalty. Shamrock Rovers go up the pitch to lose 2-0. That could have been a one-all draw. Mm-hmm. And you'd have a different complexion on the league. So these decisions matter so much. And they go against Rovers as well. We saw in Torrance Cross on Friday night. And this is the thing. So it's not about a team. It's not about the Bowes yeah. penalty. It's not about Shamrock Rovers. Not Sliger Rovers, a John Mann sent off. This is happening for all the clubs. Hence why you have all the managers coming out critical of it. Yeah. Like it's not just one manager, they're all doing it. Stephen Bradley is the latest one. You have Damien Duff slating him as well. I just think now we're at the point where you've had all the managers doing it. You've had fellas in the studio doing it. Fans can see it every week. It's all over social media on a Saturday morning. People putting up clips of the... the uh, and it's a tough job, don't get me wrong. But I just find that I'm trying to go back to a solution to it now rather than a criticism. Yeah. And because I think we're gone well gone past the point of the criticism is when I played the two referees that kind of stand out as my kind of favourite referees if you like or someone who you had a relationship was Alan Kelly was one brilliant referee Mm -hmm. and Paul Chute was another one and the reason being you had a relationship with them because they talked to you communication so So when you say they talked to you Al they'd explain the decisions and not every decision because they're not there to explain every decision but if you went off Hey God, that's how, yeah, yeah. how can he give that he'd actually well I think he pushed him in the back like you yeah. can see it clear as day and that was my view on. and he's kind of go well, well I think bit... that, that is the big bugbear of players today isn't it and, the referees don't talk to them and that's the biggest problem Eric and that was the impression I got after speaking to the assessor that the criticism I have now not, not just about the, the how to referee the games it's the way they, the referee the games as well yeah. in the sense that the relationship is so broken it's so broken now I'm at matches every week I see it there is no relationship when the criticism comes in, I hear them coming back on the defensive and how can you criticise me? You're all against me. Everyone's against me. And they come out then almost feeling antagonised yeah. with a view to, oh, we'll show you. Yeah. Instead of saying, okay, well, maybe we got that one wrong and we got that. We're, we're only human. We're trying our best the same way as that defender made a mistake, that goalkeeper made a mistake. We're going to try and do better. Managers, you try and do better on the sideline roaring and shouting abuse. We'll try and do better on the pitch and work together. Would and somebody, out? I don't know who's going to be the person to bring them all together, but I think we're at the stage yeah. where it's so bad, it's so toxic, it's so broken between the players and managers and the referees, and we need referees. I think something needs to be addressed rapidly about it now because it can't carry on that these decisions are happening and managers are coming out slating them or pundits every week and, and it's just left for a free-for-all. Would the ex-players go into it, Alan? Into I referees? did it. 
Yeah. I did it. I did the referees How course years it? ago. No way, Al. <laughs> yeah, I did it, John. Your days are I, cut down now. Tell us all about it. I, yeah, I did. When I first, <laughs> when I finished playing. Um, That's amazing. Yeah, I did, yeah. So I did the course. I was fast-tracked through over a weekend because I had played. John Ferry was actually the head of the referees at the time, and I knew John, another good referee. All We had relationships with yeah. these fellas. Neil Doyle's another one who's currently refereeing. Yeah. Brilliant. You can talk yeah. to Neil, and he sound like, you know. Uh, and a lot of them are... They're, they're, People like us, you know. Do you think that's a that's an angle that possibly should be looked at? Ex players becoming officials. Well, I think they'd have a far better understanding as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's not to say they know everything. I went and did the course, Eric, and I was a bit bamboozled right. with rules. And that's where I think they kind of go against the grain as well. Is that they're they're it's all about laws and rules. Where's the common sense? Like if you go out and referee a match, you won't know all the rules, but there'll be a bit of common sense in your head telling you, well, I think I, I think I know from playing football that's not a free kick. Yeah. Really. Instead of going, oh, well, law 4.36 tells me that <laughs> so he, you know, this, this kind yeah. of shite, yeah. like, you know. So I do think it's at a critical point with the league. There's a lot of exposure around it at the moment. We all see the attendances. We all talk about it. There's a lot of focus on it. And I do think they need a bit of help to ref. But rather than coming out and being on the defensive and feeling antagonised by the criticism, maybe go and meet the managers or someone co- someone bring them together, basically. Mm-hmm. Someone bring them together and say, look, we all need to do better here. Yeah. Let's try and improve things. It's even the same in the Premier League. Like I, I, would have been, I wouldn't have been one of those type of players when I played. A low level, but even when I play and I watch it, probably Premier United's fine. It's probably <laughs> yeah. that was I'd, a good standard. I'd never turn around and go, um, "Why the referee do this? Why do that?" Like we're in reason, but this season I just find it nearly impossible sometimes to watch. Like it's just randomness. Like, yeah, it could be anything. Yeah, like, just basic common sense. And, yeah, like, yeah, the decisions just don't seem to have any element of common sense. There's a lot it? of bad ones. Yeah. There's a lot of bad ones across the league. As I say, the, the stuff Friday night, three three red cards, you know, and. Um, Turner's Cross there's a load of incidents over the, over the course and of course some are correct and some are not yeah. but I just think there's too many big ones getting yeah. called wrongly yeah. and and we and, do and know it's a difficult job of course we have it's to say a difficult that. job and we and have a shortage of referees VAR hasn't well. helped it wider and that's oh, why and I'm it, saying yeah. Eric I'm at the point now where like I've gone past the criticism mm-hmm. there's no point to me in saying this is wrong and that's wrong and he's Brooklyn and this fella I'm at the point where a solution needs to be found for yeah. this you know and we all need to be better and I'm defending to, to a point Agreed. to say because we need the refs without the refs there'd be no football there'd be no yeah. games at yeah. any level you're, so, one, you're one step off going back to doing a referee oh, I, I did it Bob I'll tell you the story honestly I did <laughs> it, it so they said to me right I did the, did the course Right, I'll tell you this quickly. Did the course over a weekend, so got a qualification or whatever to go out and referee at a underage standard or maybe adults, whatever, uh, junior football. So he says to me, we'll start you off really light an over 35s match. Oh. So I thought, no problem, that'll be grand, you know. Went down to a... I, w- I went down to a place <laughs> just outside Dublin, right. right, and was allocated this game on a Saturday afternoon, half two. Arrived down to the ground a member from both sides greeted me as an, oh, here's the ref. Yeah, thanks a million. No problem. Lovely to see you. Yeah, there's your dressing room. Couldn't have been any nicer. Mm-hmm. The, the two of them, the home manager, or I don't think he was the manager, but the home fella and the away fella. So I think this is lovely. I did get me stuff on, right? This is all new experience for me. Like. <laughs> so, did I'm, you have brand new cards and all that? <laughs> everything. <laughs> everything was new work. Everything, right? If anyone had to see this, I, don't really, I didn't really tell anyone because it was my dad that was pushing me because I had just finished playing quite young. And he says, why don't you? Because he was doing it down home. Yeah. And he says, why don't you do it? Like you've plenty to offer. You know the game. A few quid. Go out and do it. You know, because I was at a bit of a loss as to what I was. This was before the media stuff. Mm-hmm. It was literally, I just finished playing. So... Did this match anyway, and the two fellas greeted me so well, right? Went out onto the pitch, ready to start. Within seconds, right, the two fellas who had been as nice as pie in the car park <laughs> were rolling around in the headlock. Ah, right? <laughs> I'm not joking, right? And I'm saying to myself, what is going on here, lads, right? So I'm pulling up saying, like, you can't carry on like this, so maybe a yellow card each or whatever. So the game carried on. One team ended up hammering another team 6-1, right? Every decision was questioned. <laughs> Every decision, right? I mean... Everything was questioned, right? No matter what you did, even the right, even the correct ones, even throw-ins that a fella could kick it out of play, he was still claiming it's my ball, right? So every, so came to right up to the end. So right? it gave you an appreciation, a hundred percent. I do understand yeah. it, like you know. So finished up the game about five minutes, and I'm thinking, oh, here, get me out of here now. This is six-one as well. The game's over. What the team that was winning uh, were defending, and this winger was running down the pitch. This fella literally comes over and lifts him. Now, I mean, lifts him out. Straight red all day, right? Mm-hmm. I run over. What do you mean it's a straight red? How could you? Like, going bananas. Like, they're all in my face. I'm like, he's after booting him. Like, come <laughs> on, lads, right? Salt. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I literally blew the whistle straight. I said, get out of here now. Blew the whistle, right? 
the manager makes a beeline for me, running on, right? Referee, referee, how could you give a red card for that? It's a joke. It's a j-. I says, what, are you for real? I says, you have to boot him. I says, straight red all day long. Yeah, but we're playing in the cup final next week and he'll be suspended. What are you going to put in the report? I says, I'll tell you what I'm going to put in the report, that he's after booting him and he's an idiot, right? <laughs> so we're walking off the pitch and I'm like, oh, get, I, and I actually said to the lads, grown men, Eric, like we're yeah. not talking under 10s yeah. here, grown men. I says, lads, you should be ashamed of your lives. This is the way you carried on today. I says, Honestly, the sun splitting the rocks, Saturday afternoon, you should be delighted to be running around the pitch. Yeah. And all he did all day was whinge and moan and bicker and cry. It was unbelievable. Who Went win? home, got the cards into the fire, <laughs> got the whistle into the fire, and never, ever again, never again. <laughs> never, never donned an all black outfit ever the again. The referee so I do have sympathy <laughs> for them. I yeah. do. I do have sympathy. Well, like, I mean, if you would have kept that up, it would be great. You'd have been you'd be Irish. abusing me now with the Irish. You'd be the Irish Dermot Gallagher, though. You'd be, be going on RT Sport going, was that a red card? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Peter Walton. <laughs> yeah, Peter Walton as well, yeah. <laughs> Um, so we're going to move on to our next award. Um, what would we say? I, I, I'm going to pick pick this one, Robbie. Um, the signing of the season. In a, in, and if, if, if I may start again from a biased Manchester United perspective, <laughs> in my eyes, the signing, the best signing Manchester United made this season, um, and I'm torn between two of them. But I'm going to edge on this one because he. He missed less games than the other. I'm going to go with Lissandro Martinez. It was between him and Casemiro. I thought we were going to go Casemiro. But it was between... No, Casemiro missed eight or nine games through suspension. God love him. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and I mean, I was over at that game where he, he gave Will Hughes a little hug on the collars and got sent <laughs> off for strangling him. Like, hang on a second. Stuff like that. Yeah, and then you see... Ah, listen. Anyway. Uh, but Lissandro Martinez... You know, there was the there was the talk at the start of the season that he was too small to play Premier League, five foot nine. Ten Hag had worked with him for two years, clearly knew the physical capabilities this man brought to the team. But what I've been so impressed with is his is his is his ability on the ball, his technical ability and this this ability to pass a ball through the lines, his ability to come out with the ball, and he's just made United a much more fluid attacking outfit. Yeah. Um and it's something we'd sorely missed over the years. And I felt when he got injured he was badly missed, you know. Now, don't get me wrong, I thought Lindelof was brilliant when he came in. He had yeah, a really well strong end to the season. But, you know, every day of the week, Lissandro Martinez, like, in my eyes, he's, like, he's, he's even captain material. He's that good. So, yeah. I would have Lissandro Martinez as my signing of the season. Yeah, I wouldn't disagree. Um, Casemiro's been great too. And Ericsson. Ericsson's been brilliant. Really, yeah, he's, he's worth a mention. You know, you were really missing him there for a while. Yeah. Just brings a bit. Big of fan of Ericsson. He's Andy class. Carroll. <laughs> he's yeah, class Erickson he's yeah. brilliant great to watch and Haaland's the obvious one yeah so well, let's move on move away from him and go yeah. somewhere oh, Two, I'm going to I'm going to throw one yeah and Gibbs White at Forest that was a good oh, one oh yeah. yes yeah and he produced a moment a few weeks back the Southampton game one of the best touches you'll ever see in any oh, match yeah. never mind in, in this game unbelievable little deft touch, touch. Back to class, class. Yeah. absolute class <laughs> the awareness to know that obviously the, the his teammate was coming around the corner lovely little flick but I think in a season where they were always going to struggle I think the manager deserves a mention as well Cooper's yeah. been absolutely brilliant and he spoke afterwards about Gibbs why, why the two of them get on so well and he basically said his man management is incredible and that even goes back to the point Eric about we spoke earlier about the terminology in football now and the tactics and the over an- analysation and the emphasis and all that and obviously as I said there's a place for it but ultimately it still comes back to man management and Gibbs White spoke to Co- about Cooper saying this man I love him he loves me mm-hmm. and that's why I go out and play for him every week yeah. simple as that and Gibbs White I think when you consider the state up as well played a huge part in it you need your big signing or your yeah. big player to step up and he certainly delivered I think he's been called into the England squad as well has so he or he's, he's in the 21s I think still yeah, is yeah he? he's still a, <coughs> still a young lad Robbie for Any? me, oh, sorry, for our best signing, probably Ericsson, just a nice story. Okay, right. But for most improved, which we have on that, is a player who I didn't rate, but probably Juan Bissaka. Okay. I think Ten Hag's done a so really good So this is the most, the most improved player yeah, you've seen this season. Yeah, yeah. Fair or sign. team or whatever, yeah. Yeah, I think it'd be Juan Bissaka. And I was looking there and I was like, I think um, it shows how good of a coach Ten Hag is because he's really stripped his game back. So I, In I what way? Like, like, so like, all these last full seasons, Solskjaer season, I was looking at... Um, Juan Bissaka was averaging like 75 touches per game last season. This season under Ten Hag was 54. So in every metric you look at... That's bad because you, you think he's been more effective this yeah, season. Yeah, so like he's averaging 38 dribbles of the ball, which we're talking about deep into analytical stats, but these are just like just stuff you'd look yeah. at and it's like now he's doing 33, he's averaging 52 passes per match instead of 63. Right. And he's still averaging like two or three tackles a match. So I think Ten Hag came in and looked at him and went, listen to me, 
you're not particularly good at football yeah. with the ball yeah. but we're going to work with you and that's what Stick a good coach strengths. Was, yeah like he, he pa- if you get the ball past someone mm-hmm. right yeah. beside you they'll they do it yeah. brilliant so great that's point why I think he's been the most improved from someone who I would have been like get rid of him spend 50 million on a full, another fullback but yeah, if to you have po- a good coach you're going to save yourself money in, in, at that level to the point where I was I was saying I didn't know who I'd prefer in the team Wamba Saka or Dallow and I erred always on the side of Dallow but over the last couple of months I'm kind of going Jesus, no, Wamba Sack is really on the game, game as well. Yeah. Like, I think against Grealish on, <coughs> on Saturday in the FA Cup, finally, you'd want Wamba Sack. If you give a look at these stats, and a lot of the time was maybe he wasn't getting the coaching that he needs. And mm. you can see the work of Ten Hag in him and McTominay and Lindelof. A few of these guys who are like, oh, they're not up to much. You know, you yeah. go out and get Look like up. they're on the way out. But really, what they needed was a good coach. Now, they won't be world beaters, no. but they're better than what they looked. Well, you can ago. improve them. Yeah. But that, that goes back to even my most improved would be Joe Willock. At Newcastle, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think he's been fantastic. Fits into that system again. If you, the, the 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 op, the stuff, the stats you were looking at there, Rob. I think if you look at the way they play as well in terms of the distance to cover, they're almost like that swashbuckling Liverpool rock and roll, just yeah. go after teams. Like the intensity to play at, and he fits into that. Willock, he's up and down all day. Very good footballer as well. Obviously came through Arsenal. Wouldn't have been at Arsenal unless he was a good footballer. But I just think the energy he brings to that team. Joe Linton is another one that yeah. you're kind of thinking when Beast. they signed him as a centre forward, yeah. <laughs> and you were kind of thinking, well, I'm not sure about this fella. Put him back into midfield. He's been a revelation. That's yeah. the one word to debunk my Eddie Howe argument earlier. Just Joe Linton. And like, yeah, I like know. look at the player. I think there's he was. a few words to the book that. <laughs> <earlier on. laughs> but that's all you should have said to you, Alan. Just Joe Linton because he yeah. was like he would probably do a job at Liverpool or United now. Oh, like, yeah, unbelievable! The and again, the, the, the energy to play at the and he's like a, a crucial figure in that team. Longstaff, I think, as well as somebody you kind of looked at and thought would be just a standard Premier League player. I think yeah. he's gone up a level in that team with Newcastle mm-hmm. as well. So um, Willock would be my one. I'm gonna go with a team for most improved as an organisation uh, given the start that they had and the crisis they seem to be in and how they finished I'm going to go Aston Villa oh yeah mm. and the job Emery's done there taking over from Gerard, who you know obviously didn't have a great time of it and was moved on um, but to see them finish so strongly this season to, 49 to, points they gained since he came in look, it's that's unbelievable that's it's probably, like, it's league winning up, form yeah. yeah it's incredible like and, and, and just so difficult to beat now yeah. and they've got players who are good players, but he's made them better. The likes of John McGinn, the likes of Ollie Watkins, they've become like Great superstars. Players, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like and really, the really good gone players. Under Gerard. You don't be kicking anyone while they're down, but I think really season, this season you're seeing the difference in the really top coaches and the guys who need to do a lot more work, like yeah. poor Lampard and Gerard. Like, <laughs> like there's, there's levels to it. Like. Yeah, there is, of course. And Ming's obviously yeah. struggled, had the trouble with Gerard. He's been a revelation back under Emery, you know. Just, again, goes back to manager liking Eric. So much of it is that, you know what I mean? And a rapport, a relationship. A manager makes you feel 10 feet tall going out on the pitch. You know, you have confidence playing under him. Um, so he's a prime example but named in the England squad as well um, this week where obviously he was kind of castigated and, and take the armband taken yeah, off him under the arm, like, which yeah. is not going to improve anyone's confidence yeah. or make them a better player um, we're going to move on because time is, is running away from us chaps and we're going to do something that we, we not many podcasts would do until the start of a season but we're miles away from the start of next season <laughs> but we're already going to do predictions for next season that's what we're going to do well that's what we're going to do well so I'm going to throw one out there, right? One of my predictions is Little Luton Town will stay up. There Brilliant. We there we go. Yeah. Very good story. Yeah. And all the memes that are going around now at the, the ground. ground. You see, <laughs> the funniest one I did see though was the uh, when they go to VAR, they'll have to walk into one of the houses <laughs> and, do, and, and rewind on the Sky Plus remote. I haven't seen that. Yeah, that's brilliant. Sky really? Plus remote and go, yeah, that was a penalty. Go back out onto the pitch. <laughs> Very good. That is brilliant. I love yeah. that. I love that. So, so my... Outlandish prediction of the season is uh, is Luton Town to stay in the Premier League after next season. <laughs> Mine's okay. probably Everton to get relegated. Oh, I think it's controversial, Robbie. Yeah. It's I a think long Everton time improve massively. I think, so. under I like, I think Dice are a really good coach, but I just feel the problem is deeper, isn't it? It's the board. Yeah, they're in the f- trouble with financial fair play. They might have to sell a few more players, but Dice is. If you're fighting relegation, that's who you'd want. So maybe that, or maybe one. I don't know, but what if it doesn't go well with Liverpool and Klopp? <sighs> Mm, yeah, <laughs> that's, cause he, that's he just does, a grenade on yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah, well, he looked like a frustrated figure for so long this yeah. season. He, now, he, he, you know, obviously, like he's he's come out obviously on, on uh, being very positive now about the season. He has to, you know mm. what I mean? Like I know Mo Salah wrote that tweet going, "This is disgraceful." Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, I have to play on Thursday nights now in, in <laughs> Belarus. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but Klopp was like, 
Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it doesn't matter. It's a crossroads for him anyway. Like, yeah. And he started a well, they're going to get McAllister. So, yeah, but they do need to, I think, because he, he looked very frustrated at times. Mm-hmm. McAllister's a great signing. Yeah. 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 It's not official yet, though, is it? But it, it looks like it's, it's going to happen. I think it's 95%, yeah. yeah. Um, and I often look at that and think, why are United not signing him? Yeah. You know, or Kane's the big one. Will Kane leave Spurs? Yeah. yeah. Will Levy let him? That's the thing. Will Man United stump up enough? Yeah, if the money's cash. right, he let him. Yeah. yeah. But he will charge a levy, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a my, levy levy. Here's my prediction. I think he might stay another year, Kane, and then walk. For free? For free? Yeah. And then get like, look at Kane this year, 30 goals. Like, it's amazing. absolutely, isn't absolutely it? amazing. He's insane. Like, I mean, I, I watched the, best the game, striker, best he, midfielder. Oh, he's <laughs> everything. He's got, yeah, he's, he's got everything. And he's no, there's no let up in him. No, he's unreal. No I, I'm, I look, you know, my feelings. Yeah. Him. I love him. I, and I game, love Son. Yeah. yeah, I love Son. Yeah, and he's, I know he's hit, hasn't hit the heights this year, but, but I he just cares. Know, as well, I love you know? Son. Yeah, Son's great. Like, Son's the type of fella you want on any team. Would you like to give us a map prediction now? Or, uh, uh, a, a carefully considered <laughs> <laughs> yeah. prediction uh, we won't fuss can be about anything could be about Ireland international football could be League of Ireland could be Premier League Champs- whatever you think yourself yeah, I don't know I'm, I'm struggling I'm gonna, for one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, after this podcast you are going to be contacted by the Irish Referees Association <laughs> 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 is that the IRA but anyway <laughs> the Irish Referees Association and they are going to they're going to offer you the job of refereeing the next Bowes Rovers match <laughs> to see how you I'm get actually on. working on it so I'm there anyway <laughs> we'll bring you up bring you up like Jersey <laughs> do you think I could referee and then go up and give the analysis yeah. at half time <laughs> yeah but Gary Neville's doing everything why not you know what I mean <laughs> yeah so um, no uh, here's a bold one referee standards to improve oh. whoa off the back of this whoa steady on huh? steady yeah, on that well. must be sunstroke is it, is it? <laughs> <laughs> we would love to think that that would be the case oh, well look I do, a, a solution needs to be found as I said so I do think you want it to improve you know it, it gets to the point where it's so kind of it's tiresome now that every week it's the referees like especially when the league there's a bit of a race going on yeah. everybody thought it was going to be two two clubs you yeah. look at it there's only four points exciting. between yeah. three or four teams so it looks like we have a race on as well you don't want to be coming out every week and they're all at it it's not one manager every yeah. manager's at it you yeah. know and yeah you, you just wish it was all about the football and not about the officiating you um, don't mind the odd weekend, but yeah, like every week. constant, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I think, I mean, social media hasn't done them any favours no. either as well. People have cameras and they're showing them on the next Yeah, morning, and stopping you know I mean? and pausing yeah, yeah, and yeah, all. Yeah, it yeah, always yeah. makes it look worse as yeah, well. You can't really, yeah. So I do have sympathy for, for referees, but up your game, do you hear me? Um, <laughs> so so we, as, as Eric Ten Hag said on his on-field speech there at the weekend, he said, we had a great season, but there is one more match. One more match. And that one more match is this weekend at Wembley. It is Manchester City against Manchester United, the first all-Manchester FA Cup final, which is bizarre, really, mm-hmm. when you think about it, isn't it? Um, and it's, I suppose, it's well, United's chance... you've to... been terrible for most of their history. Well, so that, yeah, 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 sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Look, you made cup finals with Ian before. Yeah, yeah. You know what actually irritates me more about them? I went over to a City game, about, it was before COVID, about four or five years ago, I think, and we're playing Chelsea, Super Sunday match, and there is no... Nothing whatsoever towards any of the old players or any kind of um, okay, you know, like homage you know, to, the, to the history. Nothing whatsoever yeah, yeah. to the history because maybe there is no. But the, the likes of Mike Summerby yeah, or Franny Lee, these yeah, kind yeah. of players, like it's almost as if this club was made. Sean Gota. Yeah, when the money. Yeah, the likes of this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Paul Dickoff. When the yeah. money came in, the stadiums plopped in the university campus area outside Manchester, and it's almost like. Or like this was just a new club formed when we got money and yeah. the hell with everybody else. Yeah. That nearly annoys me more than anything else yeah, about Yeah, 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 I suppose. So, so, so I think they might just beat United on Saturday. I, but, I, I, you know what, United beat them back in January, was it? January, yeah. Kind of suits them, like, if they can... To be underdogs? Yeah, to sit off them, mm-hmm. get the ball out wide to Rashford. And, yeah, I think i give them a fighter's chance anyway, a puncher's I, chance. I'm gonna be in, I'm gonna be in Munich this weekend. Uh, Lovely, doing a thing for the thing and then all the other things. But anyway, we'll talk about about that some other time. Um, but I'll be only be in Munich, so I'm gonna find a beer hall to watch the game. Now I might not put on a Man United jersey because they're probably German ultras over there. Say, so, is that Possibly. right now, pal? Yeah. Um, Make sure you mention you're from Ireland. Yeah, exactly. Um, do you know what I'll do? I'll wear me Bowles jersey. It'd be grand. Me Bob Marley one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but my, I mean, I'm 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 scared to offer a prediction. To be honest with you, if I'm being totally totally honest. What I've seen from City, especially against Real Madrid, I'm I'm scared, almost scared. And it's going to be a very hot day on Sunday in Wembley. Big, expansive pitch. The way City keep the ball, you know they're going to be chasing the whole time. And I fear for them. I think eventually City will wear them down. And, and 
And all I want is United to give them a game. It'd be amazing to win the trophy. Don't get me wrong, but I would love I to think see them give them a game. game. Eric. I think they'll give them a game. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I definitely think they'll give them a game. One-off games like that as well, you always have even more than a fighter's chance. I think you know. I don't think it's going to be a case they'll come in and be four 0 or a three 0 or um, dominant from start to finish. They might obviously keep the ball a lot, which you'd expect. That's the pattern of every city game. But I definitely think Ten Hag will have some sort of a plan structure to try and kind of counter that. Um, as Rob said in terms of hitting them on the counter attack you can get at Man City mm-hmm. you definitely can get at them I know they're a phenomenal team as we all know but I think United have strengths in areas where they can get at them the experience of Casemiro Eriks in the midfield as well they won't want to just show up to a cup final and let somebody kind of hammer them yeah. um, Casemiro has an unbelievable record in finals by the way in all finals and Ten Hag spoke glowingly about him there a, few, a couple <coughs> of weeks back in one of the interviews basically saying what you were saying Eric about the weeks we didn't have him you can, he basically said it straight out when we don't have him we're a different team yeah. and when we do have him he's a massive influence mm-hmm. and difference so um, I do think it'll be tight you'd have to fancy City would you, would, you, would, you, would, you, would you hazard us a score prediction? I think it'll go to extra time <sighs> Ooh, potentially I'd, penalties. I'd take that. Potentially more, penalties. More points in the beer hall yeah, I don't for me. Think, I, I think United. <laughs> these games are always cagey, tight affairs. You mentioned even the heat and the pitch mm-hmm. and the yeah. equation. All we looked the, at the playoffs there last yeah, week. Yeah, they all, all went the, to extra time. All those things yeah. play a huge factor, you know, because it's not only about the energy you're exerting on the pitch; it's mentally as well the build up. And they know what's at stake. There's pressure on City thinking the treble. United are going in thinking you won't be. T- you know the whole yeah. kind of. There's a, <laughs> so there, there's always an angle, and that's a huge angle. So. Yeah, I'm going to go penalties. Whoa! And who's going to win the penalties? Oh, it's going to be six. Oh, wait, I'm going to save his first penalty in 25 years there this weekend. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah, so hang on. Maybe the hay is warming up. Hang on. We've got the cap back. There are penalties. There, I'm going to go penalties. Okay, Robbie. Um... I'm realised this will be recorded on YouTube and stuff and it'll be here for posterity so I might just say Man City at <laughs> 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 all and you have all the money United fans going typical United <laughs> don't even believe in your own team <laughs> oh, I don't believe in them <laughs> maybe City maybe City yeah ok I'm going to hazard a score I'm going to say 2-1 Manchester City and it pains me to say that but I'd be delighted to be proven wrong so lads we've come to the end of episode 10 of House of Football with Sports Show and William Hill it's been an absolute pleasure really enjoyed today's chat my guests Alan Cawley Robbie Rebbin thanks for joining me lads and uh, we'll see you all again very very soon next week probably you've been listening to House of Football brought to you by Sports Joe and William Hill <laughs>